couldn't catch my breath. It was getting shallower and shallower, and I can remember saying to myself, I am dying. And then his blood pressure dropped. And I looked at the doctor and I said, what's wrong with him? His heart stopped. And he says, well, we need to intubate your husband right now, or else he could die. And then we start doing the chest compressions. Dean Braxton's system was shutting down. It started as a routine procedure to remove a kidney stone. Now he was dying. Dr. Manuel Irigi was on duty in the critical care unit at St. Francis Hospital in Federal Way, Washington. He explains what went wrong. As it turns out with, with him, the antibiotic that he received was uh, not good for the bacteria. He was resistant. Dean's body went into multi-organ failure and his heart flatlined. Dr. Irigi's team worked furiously to revive him. Dean's wife, Marilyn, prayed. I did say to the Lord, I said, Lord, you said in your word that you've come to give Dean life and life abundantly. And I claim that abundant life for him. At times, the unit was in chaos as they worked to save Dean's life. But he was experiencing something very different. I wasn't afraid. It was like, I'm going home. Dean believes he went to heaven. When I first entered in, it was just bright. It wasn't so much what I saw as much as what I experienced. The first thing I perceived was, everything is right. There's nothing wrong here. And I said, it's past peace. You know, there's a scripture in the Bible in Philippians, the fourth chapter, that says, peace past understanding. That's what's going on there. It's landscape, but more, because everything's alive. Nothing's dead. We got a pulse. Dean says he felt like he was being pulled back into his body. Then he flatlined a second time. Again, he was in heaven. This time, he saw Jesus. The first thing that comes to me is he's bright, just like John says, he's brighter than the noonday sun. And the next phrase I say, I wish people could grab it, and it's this one, and we can look at him. And what you're looking at is not so much the physical part of it. You're really experiencing the love he has for you. And I tell people it's, it's like he only loves you and no one else. And I saw him communicating to angels. He would just look at them. Communication there was thought to thought. They would acknowledge his receiving his information, bow before him like this, and then back out. And it was like, wow. Dean admits he didn't want to come back. And I don't tell you the truth, I was happy. I was planning on staying, you know, and people always say, yeah, you know, didn't you love your wife and your children? Yes, I loved them probably more than I ever could. But I was thinking, you come here, you come here where everything is right. Then Dean saw family he hadn't seen in a long time. And yet, on the other side of Jesus was my family, my grandmother Mary, but with her were other relatives. And some I had recognized. I had been on this planet when they were here. But then there was generation after generation after generation after generation of those that accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior that helped to produce me on this planet. They came to greet me in. And it was like, God. While Dean was in heaven, Marilyn continued asking God for a miracle. I purposed in my heart that whatever the outcome, I was going to follow God all the way. After an hour and 45 minutes, Dean came back with a weak but steady heart rate. But the bacteria had done a lot of damage, and he had to go on dialysis. I did not think he was going to survive. I, and I, 
in a way, I, I told his wife that, you know, now well, we have just to pray and, and wait because there is nothing else I can do. I believe in healing. I believe that God is a healer. And uh, I was trusting God for Dean's healing. Three days later, Dean woke up. He was so eager. We got to get people saved. We got to let people know about Jesus. Despite doctors' concerns that Dean's prolonged ordeal would leave him impaired or even worse, there are no signs that Dean even had a brush with death. He's the picture of health. In fact, the staff at St. Francis Hospital dubbed him the Miracle Man. It's a miracle that he's alive. There's no question about it. It is a miracle. Yeah, he's alive, that he's talking, that he has no brain damage. Uh, but but this, this is very exceptional because he was really, really dead for, for a long time. So what does a man do who's experienced heaven and still wants to be there? Dean says Jesus told him something that keeps his feet firmly planted. I felt like he was saying, I need you there more than I need you here. And I came to understand then how important it was for me to complete what God had put me on this planet to do. The bottom line is, until I'm finished here, you know, and I cannot go back home. I tell people most of the time, I'm on my way home. Don't get me wrong, I'm on my way home. This is the pathway my father says I have to go to get home.